I do think it might be helpful for everyone watching, Dr. Piero, really quickly, when you're talking about a gene like P53, how it can, if you have a genetic defect, how it can increase, how it actually scientifically can in increase your chance of getting cancer. Can you just explain that quickly sure. for our viewers? Many of the cancer genes are uh, a tumor defects in tumor suppressor genes, a group of genes that control and suppress cells from regulating out of control so that they don't divide aimlessly and that sort of thing. And when there's a, a genetic defect or a mutation in one of those and they don't produce the, their protein correctly or they don't produce the protein at all, then those regulatory mechanisms that keep a cell growing and dividing properly, they go awry and then cells can divide into cancers. And the most common ones our breast cancer is very common, and that's why the tip-off when your brother was um, being evaluated was premenopausal breast cancer. And relative, I think, I think your your father's grandmother had breast father, cancer. My father's like, mom. Your father's mother, yeah. I mean, had breast cancer at like 30 and died at 50 or something like that. Is that right? Yes. So that was a tip-off because it's very early, and the combination of premenopausal breast cancer in a in a relative with the brain tumor in in your red brother and son, and... that combination was a red flag that this syndrome might exist. That's a relatively minor pedigree for this disease, meaning that there, you know, it wasn't like there were five or six different cancers, and that's why they were really taken by surprise because it, it wasn't one of those families where you meet, sometimes I meet families where there's, you know, seven or eight cancers in various primary relatives, but this was not we one of those. No, family. Yeah. Carla, I know you've sort of become now an advocate yeah. for genetic testing. Can you tell us why you think it's so important? I lost one child, and I cannot lose another and by knowing her genetics and knowing we can't change anything but by monitoring her we can catch disease we can catch cancer before it becomes cancer at stage zero and right when it is, start, is developing we are on top of the ball whereas with Tanner we didn't have he had a glioblastoma there was no hope he only lived for eight months I'm so sorry we mourn and grieve but it was just really important to move forward in life especially for me because I have Casey. And I'm so proud of her. She's yes. so amazing. <laughs> she should be. I, just, I think um, you're yeah. so poised. Thank you. Thank you so much thank for so sharing much. this thank story. You. Dr. Piero, thank you as well. You can read more of Marlo's story in her memoir, Rainbow Around the Sun.